FLM, wide open thinking, world-class work, and far-reaching results. Now with locations in Minneapolis, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Washington, D.C. A strategic marketing and communications company dedicated to serving clients who specialize in the business of agriculture and the life of rural communities. Thank you for joining us for our AgriPulse Washington Week interview. I'm Spencer Chase, joined as always by AgriPulse Senior Editor Phil Brasher, discussing the week that was agriculturally speaking in Washington, D.C. And big story out of Washington this week is some action taken in the Senate Agriculture Committee on a child nutrition reauthorization. It's a five-year reauthorization that deals with a lot of the school nutrition uh, programs that have been kind of controversial in the last couple of years. You know, we had the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act of 2010, which set a lot of new standards for school nutrition right. into place. And Phil, this reauthorization, it doesn't necessarily take the ax to those standards that maybe a lot of people were hoping for. Instead, it maybe you know gives them a little bit of flexibility, but a lot of those same standards stayed intact. Correct. Uh, Spencer, they're broadly the standards are going to stay in place, and that's real important for the Obama administration. This is a signature issue, especially for First Lady uh, Michelle Obama, as we know. This, uh, this agreement, which is really involves uh, the Senate uh, Republicans and Democrats, uh, uh, Chairman Pat Roberts, uh, the ranking Democrat Debbie Stabenow, members of the committee on both sides, and the Department of Agriculture and uh, Secretary Tom Vilsack, leaves the standards basically in place. Uh, the key thing is, as part of this deal, which uh, the USDA will have to implement, is it will delay a the next coming reduction in sodium limits uh, for two years from 2017 to 2019 and then it uh, also gives a little bit of flexibility on, on whole grains. Basically what it means is schools will uh, could, could serve, uh, uh, would have to serve whole grain rich products for four days out of five. They would uh, have that fifth day maybe to have some, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, regular old pizza. Yeah. Uh, or white bread or whatever. <laughs> but uh, there's that one, uh, there's that one change, uh, or, or those two changes that uh, they hope to get uh, in place uh, by the time kids uh, uh, go to class this fall. Now you mentioned that timeline, and that's something that they're really kind of going to be working against these next couple of right. months because okay, this got through the Senate Agriculture Committee. That's a very small part of a much bigger process. Obviously, this was something that the negotiations themselves were, going, were ongoing in the Senate, and the House was kind of waiting to take the Senate's cue on this. So in regards to some kind of companion legislation from the House, and really even with Senate movement on this bill in particular, what's kind of the timeline or the path going forward for child nutrition reauthorization more broadly in Congress? Okay, well, we don't have a schedule yet on when the House is going to act, but they, they do want to take up uh, uh, their own bill and move through the regular process. That's uh, something that the, the Speaker Ryan has insisted on doing since he since he took over last fall. Uh, the Senate, uh, uh, we're still waiting to hear when the Senate will actually take up this bill. They're still waiting for some budget estimates uh, before they can go forward with the process. They may need to tweak the bill uh, a bit before it uh, uh, goes to the floor. But again, they have to get this uh, into law so that uh, USDA can, uh, can make these changes in the standards for sodium and, and whole grains uh, in time for the school, uh, for, the, for the next school year. So I think you'll see fairly uh, uh, quick action over the next uh, coming weeks. Yeah, so nothing is set in stone, kind of a fluid situation as far as child nutrition is concerned. Another issue we want to talk about uh, this week, agriculturally speaking, is another vote on Waters of the U.S. that happened uh, this time in the Senate. Uh, it was a uh, motion to override the presidential veto on the water system approval resolution that passed the House recently, passed the Senate last year, but uh, fell short of the 60 votes necessary to override that veto. And Phil, we've talked about this kind of ad nauseum about th this is really a series of messaging votes you know that Republican leadership is going to try to use to maybe I mean or is this an election play we're basically seeing right here playing out in the halls of Congress well the short answer is yes Spencer uh, uh, Republicans have, have won they've gotten the message from home that uh, voters are frustrated that they're that they're not uh, uh, getting things done uh, I th Republicans in Congress are frustrated because they have a Democratic president uh, who uh, is resisting the, the things that they want to do, and mm -hmm. if they can't, uh, 
uh, if he won't sign on, you can't uh, and you can't get a two-thirds majority to override a veto. Uh, that you can't undo what the president has done. This is uh, true on the issues like immigration. It's uh, true certainly on the Affordable Care Act, and it's uh, true here in the case of the Clean Water Act. They have a process that they found here where they could actually get this piece of legislation to the president to force him to veto it, which they did. <clears throat> the president earlier this week uh, vetoed this disapproval resolution, sent it back to the Senate. The Senate took a vote on, uh, on, on Thursday to, uh, uh, to consider that veto. Uh, the Democrats, as expected, uh, blocked it uh, on a vote of 52 to 40. It needed 60 uh, in order to get even to the, uh, the vote on the override. And we likely haven't seen the last of uh, legislative efforts to try and repeal uh, WOTUS. Uh, you know, Phil mentioned the, Re the Affordable Care Act. That was, there was attempted repeal on that 40-something times, I believe, the, the final number ended up being. So who knows what we'll get to as far as, as, far as WOTUS is concerned. But we'll be, uh, we'll be sure to keep you abreast of that information on agripulse.com. I think that's going to about do it for what we have for you this week. An important reminder, though, no one is really subject to WOTUS as it stands right now because there is that stay in the court system. So basically, the Republicans are hoping to uh, prevent that stay from being lifted and uh, WOTUS from being implemented. So as, as they do that, uh, we'll keep following that, infer that uh, situation as it unfolds in Washington. Uh, speaking of things going on in Washington, apparently there's going to be a bunch of snow this weekend. And uh, if you believe Twitter and news reports, basically the amount of snow means we're all going to die. So hopefully we'll be able to provide you with one of these videos in the future. If not, it's been a lot of fun and we appreciate you viewing. Uh, apparently we just couldn't overcome two and a half or three feet of snow. Sorry. So uh, for Phil Brasher, I'm Spencer Chase. Have a good one.